All right, we are back and ready to go. So we're gonna have Crazy Renato versus Yan Batari. I'm just gonna make sure that they know. Okay, they are ready to challenge, so perfect. I'm just gonna go over the deck lists really quickly here. So this is again our hero tournament where you are allowed to have only one of every unit. Uh, you can have four copies of your hero because you want to be able to have a better chance to draw them, but only one of them can be in play at a time, and all the cards in your deck have to match the costs of your hero, faction-wise. Like, you have to stay in the same factions as your hero costs. And with that, we've got Yan Batari playing the Collections Department, and so that is going to be a Stone Scar deck, which is running uh, four of... What was the hero of this one again? I apologize that I had seen that. Am I missing it? Look, oh, uh, there we go. Sill Hand of the Cabal, which is a very interesting one. So when it hits the enemy player, you get plus one power this turn for each of your units that dealt damage. Um, so Sill is going to be in the, the hero slot for Yan Batari, playing a very aggressive Stone Scar deck. And the other one that we have is Crazy Renato on Ikaria, which obviously is going to be for Ikaria, the Liberator. So we're going to see not an aggressive Rakano deck. We saw an aggressive Rakano deck earlier in the Oni deck from Grandmaster Sun. This one's going to be more about Bullet Shaper and trying to ramp up a little bit using Ikaria Valkyrie Captain to hit the second Ikaria. Privilege Rank, Copper Hall Bracers, all those kinds of cards. Uh, you're going to see Jack Mercenary Hunter, Heckam, and uh, we're going to jump into these games here. We're going to follow Crazy Renato first. It's the best of three match. Uh-oh. Crazy Renato with their viewership down. All right. We'll let them get that settled, and we'll watch Yan Batari first. Not that I had been sending that to Yan. Crazy Renato just setting up that viewership. Perfect. Crazy already getting that extra power right away. And now, Black Hall War Leader. Another round of the chamber. Mmm. Bullet Shaper is a fantastic hit here for Crazy. Really stops Yan Batari's plan of the Black Hall. I mean, you still have to play it because you have the Ruination Sledge. You're going to be able to try and bust through anyway. It's a great start for Crazy to be able to block this. Mmm. Crazy Renato not playing anything, not discarding anything to Bullet Shaper is definitely scary. So now Yan Batari has to decide whether or not Ruination Sledge is worth it to try and get this Black Hall War Leader through or not. Because there's a definite chance that Crazy Renato has something like Defiance and can stop this. They do have access to both deck lists, and so... Yanbatar is going to know that there's things like Defiance out of Crazy Renato's deck. Crazy Renato opting to block and then does nothing. No combat trick or anything afterwards. Whatever you need. Oh, but here comes Jack. I'll discarding the sigil and getting both the unit and dealing four to Yanbatar's face. What an absurd card. Speaking of removal though, here comes Defile. Defile plus Makar Evangel. Helping out here. Funny that 
Jack oh, almost God. costs oh, four so because you have to pay one to discard the card, but is still available to be hit by Defile because its cost is actually three. So one of the rare circumstances where Jack actually just costing four would have been advantageous for Crazy. Finest weapons in Lyria. Ooh, Crazy Ronato getting to go to the market. Crazy Ronato's market is Adjudicator's Gavel, Boar, Dramatus Mask, Flame Stoker, and Leave a Witness. Flame Stoker is available to be cast if Crazy Ronato just has one more power card. Speaking of powerful cards, Thief's Pick can steal off the top of Crazy Renato's deck. At the same time, Yanbatari probably wants to have something back to block this merchant. Yep. So Yan's just gonna play it a little bit safe, play the Dark Wisp, pass the turn. Again, they both have access to each other's deck lists, so Yanbatari's gonna know so they're not in danger of, like, a Deep Forge plate on this next turn. Ooh, and it's a Hammer of Glory getting to silence that. Not killing the Dark Wisp, which I'm a little bit surprised about. Annihilate's a good card, but it's not enough. And Thief's Pick won't actually let that Hammer of Glory get killed from this Dark Wisp either. So Crazy Renato gets more value out of it. And now we get to see... Ooh, Akaria. I was going to say, I wanted to see what was in the market for Crazy. We don't even get to see that yet, because Crazy found something even better. And Yambatari has no targets for this Annihilate, and facing down this Akaria is probably going to be game. Just a fantastic start here for Crazy Renato. Getting... All the power cards up the scale, all the way to Ikaria. For song. Yeah, and Purge Driver is nice. I mean, it's going to be able to stop that Anaya, uh, the uh, Aegis on it, but... Oof. Second big Runehammer we've seen. Smaller than the last time, but no less disgusting. And I mean, right now, technically, this now can kill the Ikaria, but I don't think that's going to make any difference. Yeah, and as it turns out, that is definitely the game for Yanbatari. Able to kill Ikaria on the way out. Get that feel good, but that'll be the end. Death by Hammer. So an early Akaria taking that away for Crazy Renato in game one, but it's not over. We're going to do a best of three. So we're going to watch from Crazy Renato's side this time. And even if this person, even if one of them loses, they're not out of the tournament. It's still got loser's bracket. So this is winner's bracket right now. They have two losses before they're eliminated from the tournament. This time watching from Crazy Renato's side. And Crazy with a tough start on this one. Wrath of Kyphus is great fixing, actually. For two, you can swap it. But Crazy Renato only has one. And being on the play, I think, has to mean that it's just not going to work out. you got to throw this one back. Make sure that they know to go. Yeah, this is a much more reasonable hand, although it's definitely got a big downside. There's no units, so Crazy Renato's going to have to top deck pretty well. They do get the ability to scout in, though, and I, I think this is more than keepable. I mean, two different scouts with the crest and with the uh, lingering influence make a lot of sense. That's going to be on the bottom immediately. Is it? 
I mean, eventually Crazy Ronaldo needs three fire to be able to play Akaria, but it does not seem like that is the best way to do this. Yeah, Crazy Ronaldo agrees. It's privilege of rank first instead of playing the Lingering Influence, which... I almost would have wanted to see the Lingering Influence. I think scouting is pretty important when you don't have any units. Now presenting. And here comes Kato, who's a little bit worse now that it's got a little bit of a higher Corrupted cost and now requires 12 or more units. Crazy Renato finding some good draws here, getting Conflagrate and Ikaria. Laura's intervention stopping that from ramping. And Crazy Renato now stuck without any units again. The plus side is that Crazy Renato's not under a lot of pressure here either. So they've got the time to be able to find it. And when they do find a unit, they've got Inquisitor's Blade. So that's going to be able to do a lot. That knife cuts both ways though. If Crazy Renato's got time to set up, so does Yan Batari. And there's a Devour. As Yan Batari just kind of gets free reign to do what they want. And set up any units they need. Are they stuck on power? No, okay. Just playing Granite Coin. And they get to see the pause from Crazy Renato. So they know there's almost certainly removal. Yeah, and it's going to hit the Kato at the end of turn so that there's no way for it to come back. Ooh. And Crazy Renato hits another weapon, but nothing to put it on. So Yan Batari stays firmly in the lead here. And Crazy just got to desperately hope that Yan doesn't have a lot of pressure. So far it's worked out, but soon enough, I mean... Yan's been able to dig a lot deeper with the Devour and now with this Wing Brewer. And they're gonna find some units to play down here. Ricardo's weapons are unmatched. So does Renato. Opting not to use the Inquisitor's Blade yet. Or the Bracers. I'm kind of surprised by that. Because I would think that you'd want to use up some of your power there, because Crazy Renato's going to have a lot of time to... Not a lot of time to put those down. Oh, wow. It's very terrifying in my mind Stone to see a Caleb's Persuader hazard. not be good enough to take off of the Wing Brewer. For song. Great hit here, though, in Purge Driver. Being able to immediately kill Champion of Chaos and silence it. So no Immortalize, no Dark Return. None of that from Yan Batari. And I mean, now Crazy Renato's got a decent board, but Yan Batari has so many cards in hand. They've spent so much time being able to set up with this Wing Brewer. Gonna be tough for Crazy Renato to come back unless Yan Batari has missed a lot of easy, easy cards. And I mean, I, I can't imagine that discarding Wyatt and Caleb's Persuader means that Yan Batari's hand is entirely dead. I'm getting a 7 3 champion. I think if you're Ganvatar, you want to chump block with the 1-1 here. Because you know that Crazy Renato is trying to get to 7. They need that Akaria. Seems like a good solid play. And a quarry after using three quarries on the ring wing brewer is pretty sweet. And Ganvatar keeps on putting really powerful cards into their void. So I've got to imagine their hand is just absolutely stacked. 
Surprised we haven't seen more of it come onto the board yet. Nothing like sill happening yet. Ooh, wow. That is a terrifying hit. That'll nuke all of Yanbatari's board if Crazy Granado can just find another power card. That chump lock with the 1-1 looking incredibly good now. Yeah, Crazy Granado trying to get in there to get that extra power. And Yanbatari, not knowing how much danger they're in, continues to block. Like, they, they know they're in danger, I'm sure. I know they don't want to give that extra power card to Crazy Granado, but I doubt they're expecting oh, Tellus. Now, Crazy Renato opting for the jump block. Nice. And a combust on the Navani. But that does let this 7 3 keep swinging. And no plays from Yanbatari on 8 power. A single spear leads the fight. Woof. And here comes that Tellet. And Crazy Renato also lucky enough to have hit another fire card. So Ikaria is now live. Nerfs most of the board of Yanbatari. And I mean, Annihilate is great, but Tellet gets a lot of value just by attacking. I'm sure that Yanbatari is happy that it's gone, but some of that damage is already done. Touch of shadow. And I mean, currently, we're going to see a 13-7 quick draw unit with endurance out of Crazy Renato next turn. And flying. Sorry, did I say 13? I meant 14. And that is a two turn clock on Yanbatari when you include the Unseen Commando. So Yan needs some answers really fast. And the big question is, do they have it? There's four cards in Yanbatari's hand. They've been throwing away a ton of really powerful stuff, so I've got to think they've got something. And that's certainly something. Pale Rider's timepiece to trade. But they're still facing down that... Oh, there we go. Sheriff Marley afterwards to pick up the Unseen Commando. And now Yanbatari's looking great. Yanbatari having Thief's Pick Sheriff Marley off this Crazy Renato's deck. What a sick move. Really awesome steal there. And I mean, Crazy Renato gets an answer for that Felrooks, but... Oof. Facing that Sheriff Marley is going to be a tough task for Crazy now. Thing to remember is... I have to remember this too. Crazy Renato has Ikaria as their top end. Is, is so if Crazy move? Renato draws an Ikaria, this game can turn on a dime. Well, and there's Inquisitor's Blade. A good start for sure. Into a Martial Iron Thor, an excellent hit. Yeah, Crazy Renato getting real aggressive, throwing both units in. You run far enough. Does Yanbatari have removal? And Sledge is nice. It does pick up the weapon. There we go. That feels like it's going to be game. Dizo's office is an incredible house here. Puts Yanbatari back to 22. Forces Crazy Renato to have to be very aggressive. And it's just going to dig for more value next turn because there's no way to kill it. Crazy Renato not even attacking with the 2-1 on it? That definitely feels like a mistake, but at this point I don't think it really matters. Spare some coin. Here comes Street Urchin to steal uh, more cards. Thank you. 
That Sheriff Marley was a hell of a steal last time. Let's see if Yan Batari can do it twice. Do we get Nakaria? No, so Yan Batari is gonna go back into the well. Let's see what else they can find. Wow. <laughs> Yan Batari just drew three cards that turn, you gotta remember. Peace is its own reward. And one of them is a steadfast deputy, but everything matters. Oh, this Martyr's Chain's just being an absolute dagger play here for crazy. I mean, a great card, but not really enough to turn this game around. Having to chump lock the 7-5, and that's if they manage to actually live. Like, if there's just no removal. No pump spells, nothing like that. Amethyst Waystone is enough to put Crazy Renato at one. Wow! Yan Batari getting spicy, going for the Wrath of Kyphus here. Letting Crazy Renato have a full hand. But there's the Defile, and that's the game. And we are gonna get a game three. So we're gonna watch this one from Crazy Renato's side. Hey, Tequila! Thank you so much for that Twitch Prime. We really appreciate it. Great close match so far. Really well played by uh, Yanbatari to win that game there. Crazy Renato just coming out a little too slow with their units. Oh, sorry, we're gonna watch Yan Batari this time, right? Yeah. We just watched Crazy Renato. Alright, here we go. We've got Yan. Wish both of our players good luck. Oof, I was gonna say, I don't know about keeping that one. It had the early black hall, but obviously Yamatari didn't think it was good enough. I've gotta imagine Syl comes down here as a pledge this time, which makes Syl as a hero very powerful. Being having, having a way to utilize extra copies of your hero is really nice. And yeah, oh, nice aggressive that. start here for Yam. Azir Auto's got the answers, though. And immediately answers back with the Champion of Glory. Which we're gonna see get killed by Var's intervention. And that's the circle of life. Just watch these players back and forth murder each other's units. Gamatari digging. I imagine it's gotta keep any power card that they see. No, going for a street urchin. Maybe not seeing a power card. Unfortunately, we don't actually get the option to see that. Get the job done. Get Ooh, and Crazy Renato going into the market. We've talked about the market before on Crazy Renato's side. With Adjudic Adjudicator's Gavel, Boar, Dramatist Mask, Flame Stoker, and Leave a Witness. Spare some coin. Yamatari yeah, holding up Annihilate. Ooh. Work Grunhammer has been really good so far in these games, and it continues to be so, even without a huge buff. Imagine Yanbatari is gonna kill that. Yep. And now, I mean, Champion of Chaos doesn't actually Stone live through this. Yanbatari really pocket. stuck on this power. They've got to play it, because it doesn't make sense to just sit here and take damage from the Rune Hammer. Gambitari being at least two turns away from having that be large enough to survive it. And while that's not an undepleted power, that does help get closer to Zuberi, so... Gambitari slowly digging out of this power problem. But in the meantime, Crazy Renato going with the Dramatist Mask. 
trying to hit Nakaria. See what happens. I mean, it could be anything. It's gonna get something new every turn. And this time, it's gonna be Jack. Ooh. Does Crazy Renato have something to discard? Crazy Renato is missing the third fire for an Ikaria. And of course, obviously being one power short. Discards Ikaria. All right. And now uses Copper Hall Bracers. And I've got to imagine that's a trade for Yandatari. Sorry, had to be. Guess they've caught up. Wow, not playing the Copper Hall Blessing felt very strange there, because I felt like Copper Hall Blessing would have almost guaranteed the power draw for Crazy Renato, and they could have gotten the Treasure Trove down anyway. That might end up being a game deciding maneuver here, as now Yandatari is able to get first the uh, Ashara, and then is going to be able to play Sil next turn. Getting really aggressive with the Thief's pick early. Yeah, now an Eclipse Dragon. You're in our debt. Lots of unblockable units here on the side of Yanbatari. And Crazy Granado just stuck with power. And on a two-turn block, when you consider this Grunation Sled, Crazy Renato needs an incredible hit here. Dig in, boys. Oh wow, and Kennel Master is ready to go. You've run far enough. That's not enough to block it, and that's gonna be the game for Yanbatari. Sneaking it under Crazy Renato here. Ooh, that. Turn with that jack. He's gotta haunt crazy. Having to trade that off made a world of difference, and that's enough to finish out this match. Very close game by both players. And we have our winner. It's not gonna eliminate Crazy Renato. Crazy Renato just going down into the loser's bracket, but Yanbatari gets to move on in winners. So this is a double elimination tournament as we mentioned before, which means that each player has to lose twice before they're eliminated from the tourney. So we'll have a winner's bracket up here, and then when they lose, they go down to loser's bracket. So we now have half of our loser's bracket decided. Really close games, a tight match for sure. And when we're going to be waiting for the next little while. We're going to get Fish Spider versus Arzu, Akane Kiryu versus Yanbatari, and Celtic versus Beardbroken is going to be happening on Thursday.